Uh, hello and welcome to anybody listening to the resurgence, I guess, of the anniversary podcast. Uh, with me this week, I have Kieran on that side and Sam down below, who forgot a webcam. Hello. Hi. And Kieran has a face this time. What um, what anniversary are we celebrating? Uh, today it is the 78th anniversary of the start of the Manhattan Project. <laughs> Oh, you always pick like the the crunchiest ones. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, it's another that's, nuclear that's, one. A few of the notable ones are: it's the 88th anniversary of uh, Adolf Hitler refusing to become the vice chancellor of Germany. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Today's a good day, and it's Alfred Hitchcock's 121st birthday. Okay, didn't we have God rest his soul? Didn't we have the dropping? Of the fat man oh, bomb yeah. a few weeks. Oh, I suppose the little boy. The little boy. It was the little boy. Yeah. The little boy. Uh, that's actually, yeah. It was the first ever test was a few weeks ago. And then uh, on one of the weeks we skipped, it was the actual Hiroshima uh, bomb. <laughs> Which I'm sure would have come up. It would have been the yeah. one that we chose. Yeah, well, absolutely. Um, cause uh, and then this week is the start of the Manhattan Project. Obviously, it's different years. It yeah, yeah. The bomb and then start mm. the project. They haven't started it this year, although that would be the way that 2020 is going. Maybe just like pick a nice one next time, Sam. Just like a, an uplifting one. It's not, not about murder. It's not Sam's fault that every day is an anniversary of some kind of nuclear event. Look, if you mm, want to change nothing it, else it, can, it, it can be about Alfred Hitchcock's 121st birthday. Yeah. You know, yeah a very, a very influential now. filmmaker. Okay, retcon. It's, uh, today we're celebrating the 121st birthday of, of Alfred Hitchcock. Oh, cool. He did some really did shady you? stuff, didn't he? Oh, yeah. He was a absolute scumbag to work with yeah <laughs> just want to ruin everything remotely but he, happened. But, he, but he made good art he did he did good films he did the i've never seen any of them no neither have i really you haven't seen psycho no i've seen nope. two, i've seen about 800 reviews of psycho so i feel like i've seen the whole film don't watch the birds the birds is shit but psycho is actually really good and he did uh, i've forgotten the name of it vertigo Jesus, how do I know the most about the film? No, I'm not thinking of that one. I'm thinking the one that's widely regarded. Citizen Kane, was that him? No, that was um, Orson Welles. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, never mind. No, wait. Not what? Do I mean Orson Welles? Oh, this is a, a real, well, it's real a, brain we need teaser to, of a, a start, isn't we it? We need to get all of us getting stuff wrong because the next 20 minutes will be full of just facts and only facts. Yeah. Exactly. Hang on. Yeah, it, is, it is Orson Welles. I'm correct. Okay. I was correct in my incorrectness <laughs> and thinking that I was wrong. So, however many weeks ago the Cheese podcast was, as it was known as Only Cheese and Nothing Cheese, uh, Sam, you brought up something that baffled me very, very much. You mentioned the, uh, the Emu Wars. Yeah. Which I'd never heard of, and I asked if you could uh, enlighten at least me well me as well because i assumed i was the only one who'd never heard of the emu wars I was just <laughs> me being ignorant it's, again it's a pretty it's a it's a pretty big meme the emu war uh, but it it did really happen uh, so in the 1930s uh, obviously the world it was going to absolute shit because uh, you emus had, because of the emus, emus mainly. Most, most of the emus Secondly to that was the uh, Great Depression. Yeah. Was, yeah. Fucking the entire Se world's co uh, economy real yeah. hard. Second um, to the emus, though. Second to the yeah. emus. We're going to get into how the emus really fucked it in a minute. Um, so it, uh, Australia was going through it quite badly as well. And on top of that, uh, a lot of farmers in Australia were veterans of the First World War. And they'd been given some land to farm to, to live on. And unfortunately, what was happening is there was about 20,000 emus uh, who were um, breaking down fences and eating all of their wheat crops. Uh, to compound this, because they'd broken down all the fences, uh, the, a tidal wave of rabbits, which Australia has big problems with, would come in and eat whatever the emus hadn't eaten. So this was a, a bad situation. The economy's fucked. 
and the food <laughs> that you're growing to live on is being eaten by enormous assholes. Assholes. Yeah. Massive assholes. So the yeah. so the the emus were basically leading uh, strikes, and they had rabbits in as auxiliaries that were that were backing them up. Yeah, they were mopping. They were mopping up. Yeah, mm. any any survivors were mopped up by the rabbits. It's a good tactic. The Romans mm. used it. It was very effective. And then obviously um, the rabbits would become emu citizens after they'd served yeah, a certain amount of time. Yeah, of course. Mm. Uh, yeah. It was only until probably the 1950s when the emus actually allowed everyone within their empire to be a, <laughs> a, a citizen. Yeah. <laughs> I, remember, so. I remember five minutes ago when I said it would be facts and only facts. It is only facts, yeah. <laughs> so... Um, after being under attack from the uh, 8th legion of emus and the 12th <laughs> legion of rabbits, uh, the farmers got together and decided they'd have to go to the government um, to request some help. So, of course, you know, they thought, well, oh, well should we go and see the, the Minister of Agriculture? Because, you know, this is this is a, uh, you know, a farming issue. Or, well, maybe, issue yeah. it's, maybe it's an environmental thing because they're wild animals after all. And mm. they went, no, I think we're going to go see the Minister of Defence. So they, they petitioned the Minister of Defence to, to 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 basically kill kill some emirs. Um, so they decided that they'd send three men under the command of, as we mentioned, uh, Major GP Merida, mm. uh, with a couple of Lewis machine guns and a ten thousand rounds of ammunition, uh, and they decided to go and kill some emirs. Right. Yeah, <laughs> only yep. three people. This isn't a war. Uh, well, yeah, you, you think it's not a war now? All um, <laughs> oh, right, this was just the beginning. Yeah, so they started. Uh, uh, so on the second of November, which is uh, not the one we were talking about, they they start they spotted fifty emus, uh, and they uh, they set up their machine guns to kill fifty emus, and they maybe killed a dozen. Uh, because they ran away. Is what? there a quiz at the end of this? Uh, yes. Hang on. It's the entirely uh, emu quiz. The emus ran nice. away, or the soldiers ran away. No, the emus ran away, okay. uh, and, the, right. and the guns. Cowards. The guns jammed, uh, and the birds. Rather than running away in one big group, uh, they split into lots of small groups and scattered, so they were harder to shoot, mm. uh, which was very bad. They've clearly dealt with light machine gun fire before. To know that clumping up is a bad tactic against them. yeah exactly mm. uh so you never um, heard of the som matt <laughs> the emu som yeah well that unfortunately never came because the emu's pretty effective so the uh the next engagement there was a thousand emus uh and they were near a dam <laughs> i like the fact it sounds like they're actually an organized army yeah well it went from 50 to a thousand and they went. Yes, yeah, so this time there's a thousand, and, and they were near a dam. So they they tried to do an ambush, so that the emus would be caught in like crossfire. Uh, but uh, oh no, sorry, this is the time that the guns jammed and they killed twelve out of a thousand. Uh, out of a thousand, yeah, they how, killed twelve. How so many did they kill in the first? Um, maybe another twelve. <laughs> but at this point, they've killed like twenty four emus. Not not um, yeah. After about a week of, of, of good old emu killing, uh, they'd fired two and a half thousand rounds of ammunition, and they killed fifty. <laughs> well, it takes a lot of uh, it like, takes a lot of fire to take down a single emu. It's like the mummer kill in Lord of the Rings. Yeah, that's true. Basically, I mean, apart from the fact that an emu's actually like one point five percent fat, so mm. the mm. bullets would probably go through pretty easily. Yeah. But Not I mean, that I know anything about emus. No, but you've you've also got to kill all of the um, offensive eastern stereotypes that are riding on their back, firing yeah. firing arrows and throwing spears. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I've got a back after, scratcher after... that's an emu claw. Oh, nice. Oh. It's not an emu. It's just a. It's just talons. It's know. definitely. Um, um, it, no, emus only have three um, toes. Not that I know anything about emus. No. 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 Of course. Um, yeah, so uh, by the end of this, you know, six days in, they killed 50 birds. Uh, <laughs> uh, Major Meredith was pretty sad, and he jotted down in his, his personal memoir 
Uh, if we had a military division with the bullet carrying capacity of these birds, it would face any army in the world. They can face <laughs> machine guns with the invulnerability of tanks. They are like Zulus, who, whom even dum dum bullets could not stop. So he was pretty impressed by the uh, <laughs> by the offensive capability of the yeah. emu army. So obviously, after it came to light that they they, they fired two and a half thousand rounds and only killed fifty birds, uh, the government was like, "We should probably stop." Mm. Uh, so they stopped, which is the end of the first part of the, <laughs> the war. <laughs> uh, and unsurprisingly, it wasn't very effective, and the emu attacks. The emu raids on crops still continue. Mm. Uh, Guerrilla warfare. Yeah, yeah. They, were, they were not satiated. No. Um, so the farmers went back to the military and went, please, kill some emus. Yeah. Uh, so they, they started the second, uh, the second round of emus. Of emu killing. Was that... Uh, did they ask for assistance 1934? And then I think it was 43 and then 48. No, this is the in thirty two, the OG. Ah, the first one right. was in thirty two. Yeah, this is the yeah, original the first one was and thirty two. Then the later one the well, both of the first parts were and then mm. later on they, they, they came up with other means to, to get to killing. Um, no, you know anything about emus. I don't know anything. No. 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 I, I I don't know. I, I sorry. So they were uh, they were a little bit more successful the second time round. Uh, and in ten thousand rounds of ammunition managed to kill 986 emus mm. so they'd managed to kill over a thousand emus but when you take into account that there was 20,000 emus to start with and they killed a thousand of them so now there's 19,000 <laughs> emus the situation hadn't really changed in 12,000 rounds of ammunition yes in 12,000 rounds of ammunition uh, well they'd clearly learned something because that's more than they killed more. Like they yeah. mounted it on, they mounted it on the back of a of a truck, and and gunned them down with uh, with truck mounted machine guns. Uh, but it was pretty ineffective. <laughs> well, they haven't even considered uh, the rabbits. So. No, no, exactly. They use really small guns for them. Yeah, really small Just machine small. guns. Just... Yeah. Yeah, on very on tricycles probably because yeah. they're oh, small. Yeah. That was the emu war. And we just need to take a, a second to realise that, like, most country, you think of most countries like national bird. It's something that, you know, should be protected and cared for in Australia. No, we went to war with it. Is the emu their national bird? It is their national bird, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they it eat it. They eat it regularly. I mean... Uh, disgusting. Why wouldn't you? Mm. Can you imagine, so like, the... Scotland going to war with a thrush population? I'm assuming that's they're not bastards. Thrush, they're thrush not bastards, the, like English. Is that the English one? Thrush is in the small bird, or the uh, thrush is in the small the, bird. The vaginal yeah. infection. No. <laughs> Jesus. As it'd be robins. Yeah. So that was the emu war. <laughs> Pretty rough. Just killed a thousand birds <laughs> for, for no reason. I mean, can you imagine what it would have been like for an emu during the emu wars? Not really. No. Well, what I, I mean, I haven't really planned it, but um, you know the Emu Wars um, tabletop game. Uh, yes, I do. I've heard of it. Yeah, available from all well, top tabletop uh, retailers. If you give me like five minutes, because I need to go upstairs and find it. Right. Um, we could do a quick, a very quick kind of let's play playthrough of of just the first chapter of the game, if you wanted. Yeah, I mean we got Yeah, okay. Time. Yeah? Yeah, go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one minute. Okay, so just the blurb. Um the year is 2020, present day. After humans reigned victorious in the 1932 Emu War, attribution was swift and brutal against your bird brethren. As emus were hunted to near extinction. But not all hope is lost. You are the last emu in Australia, and you thirst for vengeance. Powerful. Mm, powerful. So if we begin, if you've all got your, your pen and paper notepads ready, we yeah. can start. Yeah. Um, so, you are outside your cave, where emus live. 
To the north is a lone outcrop of bushes. To the south, it's back to your home, which may contain supplies for your journey. So what do you like to do? Straight out to adventure, or...? I feel like... I feel like we should learn from our lessons from the past and make sure that we're well supplied. Okay. So, so you're going south? Yes. Yes. Okay, just going to move the counters. Um, you, stu uh, you stoop your six foot two inch frame to enter your bird cave. It's empty aside from your eclectic collection of headwear, the clumsily made m m memorial to the dead. So what would you like to want to do? Yeah, well, adorn the headwear, surely. Adorn I, headwear. I think. I think before we should do that, we should just have a moment of uh, silence for all the, mm. the the dead Emirs. We should just have. A so moment. you want to you want to respect the war grave? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So um, you feel the presence of the fallen surround you, each making a booming noise that can be heard from up to two kilometers away. What emus can actually do? Although comforting, the sheer volume of four million spectral bird calls amplified by the tiny area within the cave soon makes this ancestral chorus overwhelming. Plus ten resolve, minus four ears. So note that down, please. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you're left with the headwear. Are we gonna? <clears throat> yeah, I think now we've we've paid our respects. We should don. That. Okay. So. So, your tiny eyes survey your collection, resting finally on two helmets on the farthest end. A German World War II style helm, and a Perth Glory branded propeller hat. So, are we are we both playing the choose... same emu? Yeah, we're both, both playing it's a co-op. Sorry, um, oh. it's, it's a, it's a co-op game. Oh, okay. So, um, um, what do we think the stat's going to be like? Obviously, the defence... Is going to be better on the on the helmet style helmet, but I feel like the the Perth uh, like the the propeller hat will probably aid us in our ability not to fly, as in well help us with our ability not to fly because you know emus can't fly. Got, it does probably have some jumping, uh, mm. some increased jump height. So I think yeah, we we probably go for the propeller. Go hat. for the propeller hat. Yeah. Okay, the propeller hat. That's fine. Um, all's done in the cave. Solemnly, you exit. Simultaneously, stronger more confused than before so you've only got the north to go to okay yeah so, so you proceed north towards the bushy outcrop you hear distressed honking as you reach the, peri the peripheries of the vegetation a dingo and a level two australian wanderer burst forth and enter battle stances mm. So we're now we're now in the battle mode. Uh, don't yeah. worry, I've got all the I've got about five different dies about, and I've got my official Emu War um, rule book open as well. So um, you've got two attacks available because I rolled it, and you've got the advantage. Right. Yeah. Um, you can either ground pound, or you can claw swipe, and you can do this on either the dingo or the Australian man. If we do the ground pound, is it like an area of effect attack, or is it just? No, because it's just a singular attack. Okay. If there were more emus, it would have a, a ranged um, attack, but mm. um, there's none yeah. because they died. Oh, right, yeah. Mm. Sorry, it was, a bit in, it, was I... a, it was a bit offensive for me to bring that up. Yeah. Yeah. I think we should claw swipe the level 2 Australian adventurer. Okay. Okay, cool. Are we going with that? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So, the man approaches gingerly, baring his foul teeth. You burst forwards towards him and raise your left leg into the air like a feathered ballerina, six-inch claw glinting in the sun. One rapid swipe later, and the man's wandering, dazed, before flopping into two, presumably dead. Yeah. We cleaved nice. him in twain. Nice. Indeed you did. So now you've got the dingo. Is it our turn to attack again, or does the dingo... Uh, the dingo uh, was dazed from that, mm -hmm. uh, so you do have the advantage to attack again. I feel okay. like we should ground pound the shit out of this dingo. Yeah. Okay. I agree. Um, we could, so, we um, could befriend, but we are on a path of vengeance. No, yeah. Uh, so, the dingo springs forwards, going for a nibble at your dainty legs, but you're too quick. You flap your giant wings and rise above the astonished hound, the propellers of your cap giving you extra lift. 
Knew it. Only to come crashing down with the full force of an emu. <laughs> the dingo is now perfectly two-dimensional oh. and scurries off, humiliated. <laughs> ah, nice. Nice. One of our first combat encounter. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you do get um, plus five um, strength and plus five agility, so please nice. note that down. Um, so at this point, I mean, this this is purely up to you, but you are fatigued. So would you both like to replenish your stamina by suckling milk from your own monstrous avian teats? I think that yeah, we don't want to we don't want to get caught with low stamina. No, mm. no, we should we should agree. suckle. That's good. So uh, plus ten stamina, plus five lactose, mm. but you do get the minus eight. <laughs> you get the minus eight. <laughs> Get the minus eight mystery liquid as well. So minus eight mystery liquid. Yeah. Was it just five lactose that we got? It was yeah plus five plus five uh, plus ten stamina. Mm -hmm. um, then you got the five lactose and the mystery um, liquid. And uh, but you got minus eight mystery liquid. Okay. It's good that we got that stamina bump. Which uh, obviously it it could affect the the toxicity level mm. but we'll see we'll see sorry i'm just um, crying from how emotional it is being the last uh emu left alive yeah it's fine it's fine so um you've dealt with the with the, the filthy bandits mm. um you now <clears throat> continue north the way that you're going and yeah. you're following the direction of the honking mm. and you come across a small pond and sitting within is a lone swan strange you thought they'd been wiped out after an aging and ever more demented Queen Elizabeth tried to kill every last swan in England, preferably by her own hand, claiming she wanted it to be, and I quote, her legacy. What would you like to do? Uh, which, uh, honk in response to try and get the attention of the, the swan. You can't honk. Can't, can't honk. You're, no, we, you're an emu. What, what was the noise? Can we make, make a booming noise? Can, oh, I mean, you, you could if you wanted to. Uh, if you wanted this to be your path through the playthrough, you could outright murder the swan, but obviously that is going to have a detrimental impact on your honor meter. Uh, I but mean, you, could, you could just boom at the swan. I, I think we boom. Yeah. Okay. I feel like we need all of the... We need as many avians alive as possible. Okay, so you do a really loud emu boom at the swan. Greetings, hero. This is the swan. Like you, I too am the last of my kind. So I wish to share with you ancient knowledge of my people. The knowledge of how to break an adult man's arm. <laughs> Uh, except nice. so skill yeah. learnt skill yeah. learnt no skill that break so, man's arm. we've got to find the one later that lets you blow up a man's house <laughs> uh, <laughs> so um, to the north is Canberra and your end goal of parliament house but to the east is still the swan should we I murder think, the swan I think we should use the knowledge that the swans taught us of how to break an adult man's arm but use it in a different way to break uh, an old swan's neck so I, I think we should uh, claw swipe the swan you want to murder the swan I want to murder the swan I'm, okay. I'm, we in, can, I'm we, in a we frenzy can, bloodlust we can murder the swan so you approach the swan and using your newfound power proceed to break its arms by which I mean wings mm. no says the swan meekly as it dies as you trot away, your phone buzzes. It's a text from the Queen with the smiling sunglasses emoji and £50 added to your PayPal. Nice. Result. <laughs> Plus £50. Nice. Oh, yeah. I need to add that to the stats. Yeah. Uh, so uh, inventory is £50 British. Pounds. I'll put that next to the phone that, we, that we've had since the start. Yeah. Yeah, you could have utilised it at any point, couldn't you, if you'd actually read the rules? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I just want to clarify this. Um, emus can travel great distances and, when necessary, can sprint for, uh, at 50 kilometres an hour. 
for that reason, you are now at Parliament House in Canberra, oh, cool. and not because I ran out of time writing it. Okay, <laughs> right. <no. laughs> Obviously. So, yeah. you enter the chamber, your cap disguising you as a simple Australian child. Parliament is in session. You see the President of the Senate, Scott Ryan, sat on a big throne talking about land reform. Suddenly, the nasally screech of Speaker Tony Smith pierces the mundane chatter. Who let this ruddy emu in here? I thought they were all dead. Let's make this one dead too. All in favour of making this emu dead? Raise your hand. What would you like to do? I'd like to break every arm that's in the air. Yeah. <laughs> or at least his. Okay, so um, we're going for the arm break? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So the, the, the path, if you'd, if you'd left this one, it would have been a, a different path. Mm -hmm. Or you killed it straight away. So you've gone for the the, the, the classic swamp path. Yeah. Um, so you've gone for break every member of Parliament's arms, thus eliminating their capacity to vote. Yes. Good thinking there, Sam. Okay. Um, yeah, that's fine. Um, you leap onto the first of 151 MPs, the aptly named Sharon Bird. <laughs> the deputy chair of the standing committee on industry innovation science and resources with each snap you gain experience points as you begin to level up at an astonishing rate the speed and power of your onslaught only intensifies within three hours the deed is done strewn across the chamber are the defeated and whimpering masses you have effectively destroyed australian democracy love it you do another big boom and everyone shits themselves. <laughs> the end. So where can people buy this game? Uh, Minus one Australian democracy. Yeah, put it, put it I think uh, Argos do it. Oh, right, okay. yeah. uh, maybe, I think it's just Argos. Uh, I think um, if you can find any uh, Toys R Us open near you, they, they are Yeah, they, 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 they do stock it. It's a bit yeah. niche, um, but... Um, yeah, Woolworths. I've I've found some in Woolworths. Mm. Oh, great! Yeah. So it's uh, there's more to the game than that, but that's that's just a little taste. Yeah, that's, that's just, the taste section. Yeah. Yeah, that that was yeah. But Kieran, what else could there be? We've destroyed Australian Parliament. Would it next be the world? <laughs> that's for you and me to find out. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast is sponsored by um, the Emu Wars tabletop game, um, <laughs> available at Argos, Toys R Us, and Woolworths. Yeah. Last last night, the only way that I managed to actually get any sleep was because instead of using a duvet, I just had a towel. <laughs>